What are your thoughts on this 80th anniversary of D-Day, Jim? Well, I was very glad that you played uh, so much so much of Ronald Reagan's speech at, at Point du Hoc. Uh, it was one of his best, only 13 minutes long, but he made a point there that we ought to reflect on, which is the whole point of our policy ever since World War II has been to be strong enough and purposeful enough to deter another world war. And we are in a situation now where deterrence is failing. We have the biggest war in Europe since World War II, the biggest war in the Middle East since 1973. And it's because we have been weak and we have had a weak policy and it's not gonna get better if we reelect Joe Biden. I'm, I'm deeply concerned we're gonna have a war in Indo-PACOM and we're not gonna just be sitting in the sidelines on that one, you. We're not gonna be just debating about whether to send some uh, you know, to send some precision guided munitions to Taiwan. We're going to be involved in that one. Uh, Senator Town, earlier today, ABC News sat down with President Biden in Normandy, and the reporter asked, are American weapons being used in Russia? And the president answered with one word, yes. Ought he have done so? You mean Americans, uh, I missed that one, you, is he talking about you, Ukraine attacking inside of Russia or is he talking about- The, the uh, question uh, from the reporter was, are American weapons being used inside of Russia right now? And the president said, yes. Ought he to have answered that way? Well, I think he should have asked for a clarification of the question. I mean, if he's talking about, are, are the arms we're sending to Ukraine being used inside of Russia, I think he's finally decided to allow that. It should have happened months and months ago. But if he's talking about Russians using American arms, well, as you know, they've stolen a lot of our technology over the years. But uh, no, I mean, look, you, he ought, he ought to be able to clarify his answers. You know, he ought to make distinctions. He ought to be careful. He's not capable of doing that anymore. That's been obvious. No, he's not. No, he's not. Let me move to politics for a second, Senator. This morning, it is widely reported, Axios, I think, started it, but was reported elsewhere as well. I don't know who to give credit to, that the Trump campaign has requested financial background and documents from eight people for vice president. Governor Doug Burgum, Senator Tom Cotton, Dr. Ben Carson, formerly Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Representative Byron Donalds of Florida, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, Representative Elise Stefanik of New York, and Senator J.D. Vance from Ohio. Your reaction to that list? Well, I think it's a good list. I mean, we all have our preferences for who ought to be number two on a ticket, and I base it on capabilities. And the number one capability from my perspective is the ability to communicate the message of the campaign. And so I think, you know, when I hear names like Tom Cotton, I mean, I, I'd support Tom Cotton for anything that he wanted to do. I mean, there is no job uh, uh, so difficult. I wouldn't support Tom Cotton. Rubio is great. It's a good list. And uh, he's going to pick the one that he thinks will govern the country best if that's necessary, but will also help him win in November. And that's exactly the criteria I want him to use. I actually think the reality here is it's going to be Doug Burgum or Tom Cotton, because you need to bring something to the ticket and the other ones are fine people, but they're risky. Senator Rubio is risky only because, unlike Dick Cheney reestablishing his residence in Wyoming, Senator Rubio can't go anywhere, and, and former President Trump is a Floridian. And I, I just don't know how they do that, do you? And Byron Donalds as well. No, I mean, you're right. In that, uh, in that slew of names, I should have picked out the fact that Rubio is from Florida, and which would disqualify him. I don't know how they're able to how they'd be able to accomplish that as well. Uh, but I think somebody who can focus uh, the election on the issues that I believe matter to the swing voters, which by the way, you is not so much this, this despicable conviction of President Trump. I think that's helped energize our base, but it's inflation, it's the border, it's crime, it's the danger of a foreign war starting that the United States cannot stay out of. And when I think of Tom Cotton, I mean, he's, he's just so outstanding at communicating and so credible in what he says. 
But again, others would be good too. Burgum is good. Elise, she's an outstanding young uh, rising congresswoman. So I, I, the list contains a lot of really good people. It does, and we won't know, but the sooner the better in my view. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's personally, it's about time. If President Trump called me up and asked me you, I'd say, you know, Mr. President, I think you don't have to wait to the convention to do this. And, uh, you know, the campaign's done a very good job of controlling the news cycle. I think Noah Rothman was talking about that today. So they'll package that announcement in a sequential way, I think, that helps maximize the impact. I got a lot of confidence in